Today we're going to talk about homestead fencing and I'll tell you the kind I picked and why. Let's go! I'm Becky. I used to live in the consumer rat race just like you. But one day I had enough, so I sold it all, moved to the country, and built my own log cabin with my own two hands. Now I spend my time discovering new ways to live a simple, healthy lifestyle with more free time and way less stress, then sharing what I've learned with you. Welcome to Becky's Homestead. We know when you have a homestead and you want to have whatever kind of animals, you're going to need to have fencing. Uh, to keep them in and you want to try to choose just the best for the job because there is a lot of different kinds. What I wanted to do when I moved here, the first thing I wanted to do is do a perimeter fence all the way around the outside of my property. Um, I didn't do that at my old place because I didn't have the money and so I just built animal pens on my property and then partially fenced in the outside. I wanted to do different here on Homestead Park. I wanted to do the perimeter fence first. So what we did is we hired somebody to do the two sides, a short front side and a long side. What they used was wooden post and a rolls of horse fencing, which the holes in horse fencing are two inches by four inches. And the reason for that is so, you know, the horse can't oh. paw it and get its foot through there. Anyway, so then after that, we chose for us to put up ourselves the next long side. And what we chose, which I have to give Scott the credit for because he chose uh, cattle panels. They're 16 foot long and they're a little bit higher than the horse fencing, which I think the horse fencing is exactly uh, four feet high. This is a little higher. So, okay, for me, that's a plus. And I love the way it comes in the 16 foot panels because it's easy to put up. You could do one or two panels a day and just work on your fence and slowly get it up. Another difference is on the cattle panel side, we use T-post, which I said, just use T-post. Over the years, I've just found out they're so much better. You can just pound them in. It's so much easier than like digging the hole with the post hole diggers to try to put in the wooden posts. They last longer. They really do last longer. They're easier to install. They're just better. So they have a lot of different sizes and lengths of the metal T posts. So you have lots of options too. Love it. Went up so easy. The horse fencing on this side with the wooden post. The problem with that is if a tree, a branch or something falls on that, it's so bendy, it's kind of just all weaved together. That will just squish down and it'll even tear it and break it. And it's just such a mess. You look at it and you're just like, oh boy, how are we gonna fix this now? You know, it's, it's you gotta put in now some T-posts next to the damage. And then you have to get wire and try to like, you know, I wanna say sew, weave the pieces together the best you can. And it's never going to look perfect. You know, you're just going to see that all the time, which I'm not that picky about that part. But, you know, that might bother some people, especially if it was in the front of the property where everybody was going to see it and they were going to see it every time. So that's something to keep in mind always when you're building something is how is it going to repair in the future? You know, things happen. We know we make repairs on homesteads all the time. That's your life after you get it set up is basically maintaining and repairing things. On the cattle panels, on the metal posts on this side, the beautiful thing about it is, if a tree falls on it, a branch or whatever, and it gets bent, oh, no problem, easy breezy. You just remove that 16 foot panel, and then you just put up one new 16 foot panel. Done, easy peasy, and it looks fantastic. So that's a big plus to consider when you're choosing which kind of fencing. For us at the time we did it, because we all know prices go up and down, the 16 foot cattle panels actually ended up being less expensive than doing the horse fencing with the wooden posts. So of course you have to compare, you know what I mean? 
where you live, the prices and stuff, always price stuff. But it's not always best to go with the cheapest. Like I said, you have to take into consideration the price of repairing stuff in the future. We have uh, damage to both kinds of fencing. We had a tree fall on the horse fencing on this side and damage it. And we have to repair that. We haven't done it yet. And then we had like a week after we finished the cattle panel side, a huge big branch fell on that and bent it. And Scott was able to repair that. He just like bent it. He didn't have to replace the panel. He was actually able to fix it. So just so you know that. And the side over here, we haven't repaired that yet because oh, it's just such a mess. We're, we're going to get to that, but it's like we haven't done it yet. <laughs> but anyway, let me just assure you that is not going to be as easy as fixing the, candle pa the cattle panel side. I want to talk about installation as well. If you want to do it yourself, of course, you're going to save an absolute fortune. You know, probably just half of what it costs for the materials. And take it from me, if you had to choose between the two, which is easier to install yourself, it is definitely the T-posts and the cattle panels. For sure, that's easier. For one thing, like I said, you can just work on that as you can go. You know, maybe you can't afford all of it at once and you can just slowly just keep adding the T-posts and the panels. It just works so good. And the horse fencing, it's very tricky to, you know, it's not as tricky to get all the posts in, but of course it's more work when you're digging the wooden posts with the post hole diggers on this side over here. And then let me assure you, when you unroll that huge, like 200 foot roll of horse fencing and try to get it, you know, up against the post, it's very floppy and then pull it tight, you know, nail the ends and then go back and try to nail all the ends, you know, all this post is way, way, way harder than just doing the T post and the cattle panel. So you do have to take that into into consideration, you know, how much work can you do if yourself, you know, do you have a lot of people to help you? Is it just one or two people? You know, you have to take all that into consideration when you're doing a big job like that. That's a pretty big job. All right now, so the third fencing I'm gonna talk about is my actual horse pasture fencing, which this right here is what I chose this time, which is the T-post, the metal T-post, and Electro Braid. I, I love that stuff. <laughs> it is a little more expensive than they have cheaper versions, of course. But let me tell you why it's way better just to go with the Electro Braid. The oh. Electro Braid has copper as the wire inside that you're going to electrify. And it's kind of like curled in there. So if a branch or something falls on the electro braid, it has stretch to it without snapping those little wires inside. And also it conducts better. It's just gonna give a better shock if, you know, to keep them off it. And then uh, let me just tell you that the outside white part that you can see is nylon. So great, the horses can see it better. I used to use the old fashioned, just tinsel kind of electric wire. And of course that works too, but this works better. And I'm sure of it that they can just see it better. And, uh, oh, it's just like I said, I love that stuff. And it's very easy to put together, very easy to repair. They have these little clips that you buy. It's just this little metal thingy and it has kind of two holes in it. And you put the wire like this. You put this end through here, this end through there with that little clip. You got to put the ends through the clip and then you pound that. I just use a little sledgehammer and it just puts it together. It squishes the clip together and like you cannot pull it apart. It's surprising how great that holds. So that's easy peasy, like so easy. So it goes up easy. You can put the post 20 feet apart. It, it, it just works so good. And of course I read all the manufacturer's instructions and everything. And um, of course they want you to use the clips if you can. But let me just tell you in a pinch, if you can't, I have actually just tied it, you know what I mean? And it's still, I'll get the tester and test it and it still works. So of course I later get a clip and fix it, but you know, if something happens, you gotta keep the animals in. You can just tie it for a little while and it works. It still conducts all the way around. So like I said, that electro braid on the T-post, 
20 feet apart, looks good. It's kind of minimal, you know, it doesn't feel like, oh, all that fencing. Because, you know, we've all be driven by places with horses and stuff, and you see that board fencing, and it's, it's a lot of fencing. I much prefer this. You can just see through it, and, it, you know, it's not, a, it's not as bulky. We bought our Electro Braid uh, on Amazon, which Sky is going to put a link there. And if you shop through my Amazon link, it's a way of you supporting me without costing you anything. It's just going through that Amazon link when you shop on Amazon, which thank you very much for the people that do it. And then also the cattle panels we got at Tractor Supply because we, you know, investigated and that's where we found the best price on those. So just so you know that stuff. And Scott will put a link, you know, to both. So you can easily just click on it, read, find it, whatever you want to do. So I hope this helped you just maybe get your mind wrapped around a little bit of different fencing options you have out there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Happy homesteading. Bye-bye. <laughs>